one of the basic tenets of, of lupus as a disease is that it affects young women. And why that is, is not clear. We have the natural experiment, the, the experiment of nature in pediatrics, where children go from low risk of having lupus to higher risk of having lupus during puberty. As children go through puberty, they sequentially acquire one hormone at a time. So that will let us look at, do these children actually have uh, lupus flares because their estrogen is up, for example? Or is it at a time when leptin or prolactin or one of the other hormones that differ between girls and boys uh, and differ through puberty are activated? That should also help us understand why children who have not yet expressed lupus but clearly have the genetic potential express lupus for the first time during puberty. The other component of this uh, project that is novel is to look at uh, the gene expression profiles of children sequentially as they are going through puberty so that we will know which genes are turned on, which genes are turned off. At the present time, I think it's no surprise to anybody that, that we are currently treating lupus largely with uh, atom bombs, or at least cannon, uh, trying to suppress inflammation. But in doing that, we have a lot of bad side effects. If we can predict that a child who already has lupus is going to have a flare at a particular developmental stage, or in response to a particular hormone, better still, we may be able to dampen the effects of these hormones with anti-hormone therapy. We have to think carefully about hormone suppression in teens because their identity uh, is already, their self-image is already often devastated by the lupus rash, the steroids, um, the growth suppression from being ill. Uh, but I, I still think there may very well be a role for blocking a hormone that may put off that stage of puberty for a year or two until their disease is quieted down and come under better control.